Hey guys, another right dev here. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we added a shop for all of our Robux items. So you can purchase all the game passes in this game. It doesn't work for me because I already own the item. But if you didn't own the item, you could buy it. And you can also buy slaps as well. As you can see, I can purchase 250 slaps and 50 slaps. And we also added a kill streak plus kill button for the admin panel. So you can see, whenever I click this button, I gain kills and it works. And Bruh. I'm dead. Anyway, without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right guys, so I'm in our game here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make some developer products that we're gonna make to give the players slaps. So to do this, we can go to settings, then we can go to monetization. And you're gonna scroll down to where it says developer products and click create. And this is going to create a product called developer product one you're gonna go ahead and edit this and you can rename it so for me i'm gonna do plus 50 slaps and set the price to two robux you can set the price to whatever you want and then i'm gonna create another one that gives the player 250 slaps now that we have our developer products we're gonna need to make our ui so i spent 15 minutes or so making a ui and I'll have a link to the model in the description. So once you download the model, which is totally free, you're gonna go to your toolbox, you're gonna go to your inventory and set this to my models. And then you can just insert the slap battle UI shop. So you're gonna see it appear in workspace. You can go ahead and ungroup it and then move the UI into starter UI. And as you can see, we get this little shop UI template that you can customize and make your own. It's pretty simple. We have a shop with a template for your items and a open and close button right here. Before we do anything else, we're actually going to add our products here. So we can open up the shop frame, open up the pass holder, and we're gonna click on the template, which we can then duplicate. And you're gonna keep duplicating it for all of your Robux costing items that you have in your game. And you can see that it is in a nice grid as well. So for me, I have five items that you can purchase with Robux, which are kill streak, two times slap game pass, five times slap game pass, and our developer products that we just created that we're gonna code really soon. So now we can customize each template frame to match one of our products. As you can see, I've customized each item here. All I did was I renamed the frame and changed the text and the name text label to match the item name. And if you wanted to, you can also, of course, add in an image here. But for tutorial sake, I'm not going to add images just to save time. Now, before we do anything else, we actually need a way to open and close this UI. So on the image button here, we can add in a local script and we can go ahead and rename this script to just the UI toggle. And this is a fairly simple script. So we can start by doing local frame is equal to script.parent.parent.shopframe. And then we're gonna create a function that runs whenever our image button is clicked. So we can do script.parent.mouse button one click, colon connect function, and we won't define any parameter thingies. And then we're gonna check if the frame is visible already. So if frame.visible is equal to true, or equals equal to true, we're gonna do frame dot visible is equal to false so if this frame is visible when you click the button the frame is now invisible and we're gonna do else so if the frame is not visible when you click it we're gonna do frame dot visible is equal to true as i said fairly simple script so we're checking if the frame is visible if it is we're making it invisible and if it already is invisible we're making it visible so now once we load in our game and we click this button, you can see that the UI toggles on and off. Now we can get to coding our actual items. So in the shop frame again, you're gonna open up one of your items. You're gonna open up the purchase button and we can add in an int value, which we can go ahead and rename to ID. So then we can open up our browser and go to Roblox and we're going to find our game. So we can do this by going to the create tab and then going to my creations. And you're just going to scroll down until you find your place, which is right here. You're just going to click on it and then click on back and it will take you to your game. And then from there, we can go to store. We're going to get our kill streak badge so I can click on it. And at the top of the screen, you're going to see 
this random batch of numbers called the asset ID, which we can go ahead and copy. So now back in the game, we can paste our killstreak asset ID into the int value, just like this. So now in this purchase button, we can click the plus sign again and add in a local script and name this to prompt purchase. And I should also mention that this script I'm about to do only works if your item is a game pass. So make sure you're doing this for game pass items and then we'll get to developer products in a little bit. So we can do local ms is equal to game colon get service. I'm gonna get marketplace service. Then we're gonna set the ID to the int values value. So I can do local ID equals to script dot parent colon wait for child. We're gonna get the ID dot value. And we can do local player is equal to game dot players dot local player. So now we're just gonna check when our button is clicked. So I can do script dot parent dot mouse button one click colon connect function. And then we're simply gonna do ms colon prompt game pass purchase. And then we can do player comma ID. And as I said, this only this script only works if your ID is the ID of a game pass. So make sure that this is a game pass that you're doing this for. So now we can repeat this process for all our other items. So we can just copy the ID and the prompt purchase script and paste it into all our other game passes and just simply change our ID to match the IDs of our other game passes. So once you have done that, if you were to play it, we get all of these errors. What is going on? Oh, I see. I pasted the ID in the prompt purchase into the item frame instead of the item purchase button. So make sure you put them in the purchase button. So now if I were to play it, I can click on this and it says you already own this item. This because I already own it. But if you did not own these game passes, it would pop up and I'll be able to purchase them. But these still do not work. So we're going to code these. So you can actually paste in the same script and ID int value into these buttons as well and change the ID. So to get the ID for developer products, you can click on game settings and then go to monetization. I'm gonna scroll down till you find your corresponding product, which you can go ahead and right click and click copy ID to clipboard. And then you can close out of it and paste in your ID. And you can do the same thing for the other developer product as well now the only difference is in these scripts is they're instead of doing prompt game pass purchase we're going to do prompt product purchase and we can do the same thing for the other script as well we're going to do prompt product purchase and not game pass purchase so now if i click on these you can see it pops up asking me to buy the plus 50 snaps and this one works as well but the only problem is once we buy our product nothing happens we're just ripping off our players and we are actually done with our ui now so we can just go ahead and make the shop frame invisible again in order to make their product ids work we're gonna add in a script into server script service and name it to give slaps on purchase and we can start off by creating a variable for marketplace service. So I can do local marketplace service is equal to game colon get service. We're going to get marketplace service. And then we're going to create a function whenever a player has completed a product purchase. So I can do ms dot process receipt is equal to a function. We can get receipt info. And I will admit, I did not make parts of the script. I honestly have no idea who made the script. I know that this is one of the first scripts I got a long, long time ago. So if you know who made this, please let me know. Again, I have no idea. But we're gonna do if receipt info dot product ID is equal equal to, and then we're going to do our plus 50 slaps product ID. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that out of our ID int value real quick. We can do then we're going to set variable for the player. We can do local player is equal to game dot players colon get player by user ID. And we can do receipt info dot player ID. And then we can do local leader stats is equal to nil. And we're going to create a repeat loop until leader stats. So you can do it if player colon find first child leader stats then we're gonna do leader stats is equal to player dot leader 
stats and it's gonna add in a weight so now what this is doing is it's checking if leader stats exist and if not it's setting it to leader stats and the reason why this is in a weight loop is because sometimes roblox likes to bug so this is simply to prevent any future bugs from happening that i have to go ahead and make a video about if something ever does go wrong because sometimes lines like this do break for some reason then we can do leader stats dot slaps dot value is equal to leader stats dot slaps dot value plus 50 or however many slaps your product is supposed to give them and then lastly we can do return enum dot product purchase decision dot purchase granted and then we can do else if receipt info dot product id is equal to our plus 250 slaps id then we're just going to copy these lines right here and paste them right here and just set this to give the player 250 slaps instead of 50 and if you had more products you would keep going doing the same thing so now if we were to open up our ui and purchase plus 50 slaps you can see we gained 50 slaps and we do plus 250 slaps we gain 250 slaps and we can just keep on doing it as well so now the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a kill streak admin kill giver button so in the admin panel you can just go ahead and add in a text button or something which you can go ahead and rename to one kill streak and we're just gonna customize it so i just made this very simple button here and in replicated storage we can go ahead and add in a remote event and rename it to give admin kill streak now we can add in a local script to our ui and rename it to reward on click we can set a variable for the player so you can do local player is equal to game dot players dot local player then you can do local character is equal to player dot character and creating a variable for the event we just created. So local event is equal to game that replicates storage colon wait for child. And we're going to get give admin kill streak event. Now we're gonna create a function that runs whenever the button is clicked. So you can do script dot parent dot mouse button one click colon connect function. And then we're gonna check to see if they have kill streak in their inventory. Because we don't want scripts to run if the admin clicking does not actually have kill streak, because that will break the script. So you can do if char colon find first child kill streak or whatever you would name the glove or player dot backpack colon find first child kill streak. Then we're going to fire the events. So you can do events colon fire server and we're going to fire the character. So now in server script service, we can add in another script and rename this one to admin kill streak so we're going to create a variable for the event again so we can do local main event is equal to game that replicates storage we'll wait for child and we get the give admin kill streak event i'm going to create a variable for the kill streak ui event so we can do local kill streak ui event is equal to game that replicates storage we'll wait for child you can get the kill streak ui event and local phase event is equal to game that replicates storage colon wait for child and you get the phase event or that controls the kill streak phases so whenever the main event is called we're going to create a function so you can do main event dot on server event colon connect function and we're going to get the player and the character so now we're going to check if the player has kill streak equipped or if it's in their backpack so we're going to start with the backpack so we can do if player dot backpack colon find first child and we're going to get kill streak then we're going to do player dot backpack dot kill streak dot handle or dot hit box sorry dot power dot value and we're going to do plus equals to one and we're going to set a variable for how much power they currently have so i can do local power is equal to player actually we can just copy this line right here is equal to player dot backpack dot kill streak dot hitbox dot power dot value so then we're going to fire our other events so we can do kill streak ui events colon 
fire by your client and we're gonna do player comma power so we're firing the event for the player's client and we're sending over the power so then we can also do phase events colon fire as well i'm gonna send over the character and we're just gonna send the message if back pack because that's part of the phase event script so then we can do else if char colon find first child kill streak then we're going to copy all of these lines and paste them here but instead of it being player dot backpack we're going to do char dot kill streak dot hitbox power dot value equals one and same thing right here we're going to place player dot backpack with char and change this message right here to be if char as well so now if we equip our kill streak and walk down to our portal here if i click this button Bruh. it says power is not a member of oh i see now okay i forgot about the hit handler script that the power is actually in so we're actually going to need to do a hitbox dot hit handler dot power so everywhere after hitbox we're just going to put hit handler so now if we play it, you can see if I click this button here, it gives me one kill. And as you can see, my power updates as well. And I can keep clicking and it also updates my phase, which is great. And you of course can go as high as you want with clicking. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.